What's up everyone? My name is Platinum Howler, coach of your Delta Gligers. Today, I am bringing you the week one match for season eight of the IBL. We're going up, we, excuse me. We are going up against Eco and his Molala Moralols. Molala is the city in Oregon that he just moved to. He used to live in Florida. He used to be the Flo Florida for Alligators, the team name that he used uh, when we played against each other in the L.E.T. Uh, he is the commissioner of the L.E.T., making his first foray into YouTube uploads. Uh, so I am honored to be his uh, first opponent for his uh, debut IBL match. So I am incredibly behind on IBL stuff in general. Uh, just IBL uploads and you know making sure I have time to get decent teams together This is not something I would consider a decent team. I basically just said I'm gonna pick this mon this mon this mon this mon this mon and this mon and see whatever and see what happens So yeah, um, this is gonna be a short team builder for sure uh, He has a Dracovish, so we have Seismitoad <laughs> um, Dracovish is one of those mons that you have to have a very like you don't just bring them on and like to counter it like water absorb mons are not going to just straight up beat dracovish but it's something it's a good idea to to bring it when you fight dracovish um i'm not saying like i don't i don't believe that this seismitoad is the best uh mod in general just because the fact that he has dracovish with a gmax venusaur as well just makes it a nightmare um, but we have, you know, we have it with uh, Rocks Earthquake. Uh, I didn't feel like I need a water type move, so we just put, we have Ice Punch and Knock Off to try to, Ice Punch is basically just to catch a Venusaur on a switch in, uh, and I'll be happy to knock off its, uh, whatever its item is as well if, uh, if it comes in on a knock off. And then I guess we have Rindo Berry, not to necessarily take hits from the Mega Venusaur, but we can take hits better from stuff like uh, Vicavolt with Energy Ball, uh, Stunfisk. If Stunfisk comes, we will get into the Stunfisk scenario a little later. Then it has a grass type move called Snap Trap, which will trap me in also. Uh, so I guess it could help against that. It can help against the Alakazam's Energy Ball, so Valley could have a grass type move as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, we are definitely going to be bringing our G Max Flapple to week one. Uh, we are just running Jolly Max Speed because, see, I didn't. This is how little I prepped for the game. My, I, for some reason, was thinking that Dracovish is base 70 speed, but as soon as I was done with this team, I was like, isn't it base 75 speed? Which I'm pretty sure is right, but I never cared to look up, so... But anyways, we are running Max, uh, Jolly Max Speed Flapple nonetheless. Uh, so we have the Kebia Berry as our item so that we can uh, attempt to take a Poison-type move from his uh, uh, G-Max Venusaur. Uh, we can take it in, like, G-Max form or not, it's still going to be doing about the same amount of damage because the Poison-type uh, Max move isn't very strong. But if he's clicked it multiple times already and given himself special attack boosts, then it becomes uh, then it becomes really dangerous. So I want to make sure that I can live a hit from that thing and uh, be able to click max airstream in its face uh, to give myself a speed boost. And then I'm going to be in a good position to do a lot of damage to pretty much the rest of his team. One thing that I think is likely that he will bring is a steel type Solvali. That is, Steel-type Silvalli is the best check to Flapple that he has on his team because he doesn't have to run, he can run, he doesn't have to run too much speed on it to be able to uh, outspeed Flapple. He can resist my dual stabs. The only thing that he doesn't resist is uh, Max Darkness or Sucker Punch. And he can click Ice Beam against me to do a uh, crap ton of damage, target my very low uh, base uh, special defense side, so... Uh, but we do have a Cinderace for that. Uh, I am not, I am not running enough speed to like guarantee outspeed the Silvalli. But there is absolutely no reason for him to run any more speed on Silvalli than just to outspeed Flapple. I am only running enough speed on my Cinderace to outspeed his base 80 mons, i.e., Venusaur and uh, Driftblum. So, and the rest we we put into bulk. So we have a decent. 
We have a decent amount of HP to try to take hits from a G-Max Venusaur. We can substitute down to bring ourselves into Blaze range, which might actually help us be able to pick up a knockout on G-Max uh, Venusaur while it's still in its G-Max form. Uh, low kick for Tyranitar, basically only for Tyranitar. And I guess for Dracovish as well, I think it should be doing lots of damage to Dracovish. Uh, we don't want to be... I would be more okay with running High Jump Kick if he didn't have a Drift Blim on his team, like if he didn't have a Ghost type. Uh, and then U turn just for momentum and heavy duty boots as well, so we don't get chipped down by hazards. The only thing that we're going to be chipping ourselves down by is, or down with, is Substitute. Porygon 2. Uh, this is probably going to be coming most weeks on this team. It is just a mon that you can count on to be reliable and take tons of different hits. Uh, Ice Beam and Tri Attack are two attacking options. Uh, Ice Beam is super effective on. The Venusaur, this is probably going to be what we default, uh, or it might be something that we default switching into Venusaur. At least if he brings a Venusaur in on us, then we can take it on decently well. Uh, Trick Room is basically exclusively to support Pincurchin, uh, because we are not bringing, like, we're not bringing uh, our, any of our other Trick Room setters to this game. I feel like Slowbro, uh, Galarian Slowbro is actually decent at taking on uh, G-Max Venusaur, but, you know, that's something that we could maybe save, keep in our back pocket for playoffs if we should meet again in playoffs. Uh, so yeah, there's not really much else to say about the Porygon 2. Uh, Trace is the best ability, because if I'm bringing this in against Mega Venusaur, it's more naturally specially defensive, so uh, Download would not be giving me a special attack boost regardless. Now we have an, our, our Electric type core. Uh, Galvantula hit, hits the same speed stat as Cinderace, and we are choice specs to hit as hard as humanly possible. Uh, so, if he is substitute Dracovish, like if he is, if like substitute Dracovish, I think is pretty common against uh, uh, to bring against like water absorb mons. So if he tries to pull any shenanigans like that, we can hit him with the choice specs bug buzz through the substitute. We also are a swarm instead of compound dies uh, because of rising because rising voltage is a thing. There is a good chance that if I have like both Galvantula and Pincurchin on the same team, that I'm not going to be running comp compound dies because the only reason you run that is to boost Thunder's accuracy, but I'm not running Thunder. So Galvantula's secondary abilities are probably going to see quite a bit of use uh, on the team this season. If uh, it's basically does Swarm basically does the same thing as Blaze for Cinderace. If I get below one third, I'm going to be uh, hitting even harder with uh, Choice Specs Bug Buzz. Energy Ball is basically the best thing we have to hit Galarian Stunfisk. Now, if he brings the Galarian Stunfisk, which I wouldn't put it past him because he says that he wants to, he wants it to put in, uh, he wants it to put in work for him this season. And if there, this is the matchup, honestly, to bring it. However, if he's bringing the Stunfisk, then he's bringing a Steel type that does not resist Flapple's Stab Grass type move. And I'm not sure if he's going to want to bring both Stunfisk and a Steel-type Silvalli, so we'll see. But if he doesn't bring the Stunfisk, then this combination just goes in. Like, Pincurchin, Magnet boosted, Rising Voltage with Electric Surge up. Good lord. His team does not appreciate taking that on. Uh, I mean, G-Max Venusaur can take it on as well, but hopefully uh, the G-Max has been popped by the time we get to take it on. Uh, we have Pin Missile. Since I didn't actually calc the pin missile against Alakazam, but it can, like, I'm sure it, depending on how many hits we get, it has a chance to Oko it, you know, ignore the fact that it can live any one hit with Focus Sash. Hydro Pump. <laughs> I just love that this thing gets Hydro Pump. Uh, that hits the Galarian Stunfisk, and then Sucker Punch can get a little bit of extra damage off against his team when we don't have Trick Room up. So, that is going to be the team, and I will see you right back for the battle are you ready for some pokemon a monday night party let's get this started yeah so how would you compare that to my first attempt at the monday night theme better worse still just as cringy let me know down in the comments below we are one half of 
the week one Monday night doubleheader, and we are about to get into this finally. It's been, uh, this is taking place very late. And it's uh, I th we knew going into going into the this that it would be a late match because Eco is in the middle of a uh, move from one corner of the country to another. Still been a long time coming though. We're gonna have a couple IBL matches getting played in rapid succession. I don't really know what his team's going to look like other than I expect Dracovish and Venusaur because those are clearly his two best Pokemon. And I don't really know how... Well, I think Soul Valley will come too, but we'll see. We are just going to play this by year. The server took quite a bit of time to uh, get me to send the rules to Eco. Now it's taking almost as long to connect with him. Uh, maybe he's just doing an intro or something. I don't really want to have to edit this, so I'm going to try to keep talking for as long as possible. What? Okay. Ah. Oh. Um. He asked me to wait to press A. I don't know why. I guess he's not ready to start right away. I'm pressing B. He was asking me to wait to press A, but I wasn't looking. Okay, it didn't. It's fine. Okay. So he didn't bring the Tyranitar. Silvali. He didn't. He also didn't bring the. Um, also didn't bring his ground type, the Galarian Stunfisk. Hit him on top. Dracovish, Alkazam, and Venusaur. What the heck am I going to lead with? I mean, I think Cinderace is in general a pretty safe lead. So let's go with that. I mean, the only thing it doesn't outspeed is Alakazam, and I don't think he... Well, I could also lead with... Uh... I could also lead with Specs Thing. Specs... Uh... Nah, I think Cinderace is better. Okay, getting to try out some new mons. Always, always a little dicey. I feel like my record, of course he's in Balanlea Stadium. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've ever had a match in the stadium, but so that'll be a good change. Eco is... Oh god, that outfit. Eco is always... Okay, so that is... Definitely looks like a Steel-type Silvalli, which is not surprising to me at all. I can confirm that, though, by checking his Pokémon. Uh, no info, actually. Normal-type Silvalli. Okay. I could go for sub, and if he clicks party shot, party shot would still go through my sub. Normal type is very interesting. Uh, low kick. I don't know how much damage low kick would do. I'm just gonna go for it. Oh, that's a two hit KO. That's really nice. And he just goes for a multi-attack. Oh my god, that's Choice Banded. Uh, so we're now in blaze, blaze range, just like that. 
Good lord. Um, that has to be Choice Bandit. I don't want to. I don't want anything else to take the hit. He doesn't. Well, the only thing he would switch into a low kick is. I'm just gonna click it again. He could switch Zam into a low kick. I don't think he wants to do that. He is gonna switch out though. Dreadle is hit him on top. I just wanted to make sure that I hit and knocked it out. Um. I, now I can't use this thing as a Venusaur switch in anymore, but... So he did Intimidate me. That does a lot of damage because we get a crit. That's too bad. Uh, it's unfortunate for him. I could have made the aggressive play and gone for a Pyro Ball there because it would have been Blaze boosted. Uh, I do not want to let this go down to a priority move. I know he's not Technician, but still. Uh, I think... I could go into... I know that he has no immunity to Volt Switch, so I could just go into Galvantula. Because if he goes for a fighting type move, then we resist. That's what I'm going to do. I don't want to uh, let Seismitoad get weakened, because, you know, Dracovish is a thing. I would really wish I... If I had clicked Pyro Ball there and, and got the crit like I just did with Low Kick, then this hit on top would be dead. Uh, rapid Spin, even though there's no hazards, uh, he actually could be... I have a hard time thinking that he's going to be faster than me now, even though I'm not max speed invested. Because he's shown to be leftovers. It's, it's very possible. I don't know why you would run a Intimidate Leftovers hit on top with Rapid Spin with enough speed for to outspeed me, but he's going to switch out anyway. Vickavolt, so if we had clicked Bug Buzz, this that would have almost to it, guaranteed to hit KO'd. That looks like it's probably just max HP. I don't think it's going to be Assault Vest or anything. But this is theoretically a free switch for Cinderace. I mean, you have to click Pyro Ball and kill anything that's not Dracovish. So this time, I am going to risk the miss. He could also be Aquaberry, but I think we still might kill him, even if he is Aquaberry. Because this is going to be Blaze Boosted. This is where Blaze, you know, Blaze isn't a terrible ability on this thing. Libero is definitely the way to go if it is uh, ever allowed. But uh, Blaze is going to come through here for us. Provided we hit. Switching out. Okay, so he goes right back into the Hitmon top. So it pro so this probably doesn't kill. And <laughs> look at that, we miss. Okay. Sigh. Do I want to make the same play as before? I don't really think so. What the heck is this moveset going to be? Like, Rapid Spin Toxic. I don't think he has a priority move, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna make a... No, that's... that's stupid. Does he think I'm banded? I wonder if he thinks I'm banded. Anyways. Um, U-turn's gonna do negligible damage, so I don't want to risk him having a priority move, like Sucker Puncher or whatever. He could have Triple Axel, actually. Triple Axel makes sense, because then he could... Uh, Triple Axel could KO Flapple. Just goes for a Rapid Spin again. I would have clicked Triple Axel. So, I mean, obviously I'm not setting Stealth Rocks up in front of this thing, but I didn't want to switch in Galvantula again. Uh, I'm just going to click 
I'm just gonna repeatedly click Earthquake against this thing. I don't really want to... I don't really want to be switching anything else into this thing. Other than this Seismitoad. And I think he's gonna have Toxic, but... If we had hit the Pyro Ball, we would have been in a much better position. We may have... Honestly... That's not what I was expecting. The Vicavolt makes a return. If we had just clicked Pyro Ball on turn 2 instead of Low Kick, and then got the crit against that thing, we would have been in a much better position. I don't want to take an Energy Ball from this. I think he knows that. I'm just going to go on Porygon 2. I would not be surprised whatsoever if he clicks Volt Switch here, expecting my Switch, but that is what it is. You're going to Trace Levitate, which I don't think helps us very much. Uh, actually, Sticky Web comes out. So, that's kind of a problem. I didn't... That's not something I think thought about in prep, to be honest. And again, this is where poor removal comes back to bite me. It's not going to affect Cinderace, but it affecting Galvantula really sucks. Do I want to click Trick Room here? Uh, I mean, Trick Room might not be a bad play. I don't even think I put negative speed on this. Oh well. Let's click Trick Room, and we can start getting Concursion in to click, to click buttons. So we are very specially defensive, we can easily take a Volt Switch from him. I don't really know what he wants to go into against Porygon 2, he could just go into Hitmontop again. Actually that's going to be the Silvalli. Which we probably don't knock out with um, with try attack from this range, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. I know he's choice banded. Well, I, at least I think he's choice banded. Uh, we don't kill. Oh, but we get a burn. That's massive. Exp <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. That is a great bring. Uh, this absolutely would have killed me if I didn't get that burn, so I'm sorry about that. Wow, this has been a really haxy game. Really haxy game. Uh, I think that tends to happen when you have two players that aren't, like, taking the game super seriously for some reason plays even more of a role in those games so okay so we have our trick room so valley is gone Vickavolt cannot kill us from the range we're at so we can recover in front of it I don't think okay so this comes in now which is not surprising to me I kind of just want to click Recover. Because... Yeah, I kind of just want to click Recover, and if I'm, if I'm faster... Then, if he's clicking Close Combat... I am faster in the Trick Room, so he's going to be lowering his... Uh, if he clicks Close Combat, then he'll be lowering his uh, defenses. Uh, I don't think he can... Oh, that's that's out-damaging my recover, so I should be going for an attack this turn. That may have been a misplay, honestly. I may have, I probably should have just let this go down so I could get an incursion in, because I'm not going to be getting another Trick Room up at this point. That for sure was a misplay. But I thought I could out-damage his... Uh, or I thought I could out-recover his, uh, his, uh, down- Oh my god! Are you kidding me right now? The hacks is crazy. I did not want that paralysis! 
Because he's going to be uh, even slower in Trick Room now, but... Anyways, uh, I have, I believe, only one turn of Trick Room left, sadly. But even then, Pinkurchin should be slower than everything in Trick Room. I think Pinkurchin is about to get its first kill of the season. Sticky webs really suck. That may force me to try to get two Airstream boosts off with uh, G-Max Flapple. Let's see this rising voltage animation. Why are you switching this out? I don't understand. Oh my god. This is going to be some big damage. Not as much as I thought. Okay. So, something is going to have to die now, and then we can bring in Cinderace and click Pyro Ball. Uh, he can probably only kill Pinkurchin if... Actually, Pinkurchin, I don't have Trick Room anymore, so Pinkurchin's only real, real use... Well, that no, Pinkurchin's still useful. I think what's actually not useful at this point is uh, Galvantula because of Sticky Webs. So I'm gonna sack off. I'm gonna sack off Galvantula, and uh, save this to bring it in against like maybe his Hitmontop later on. Because, well, I don't know if he can. I don't know if he can twit KO Pinkurchin with. Um, I don't know if he can twit KO Pinkurchin with uh, close combat from Hitmontop, but it, he might be able to because just its base HP sucks so much. Here is the Venusaur. I guess he doesn't know that I'm actually boots on my uh, Cinderace, so I won't be affected by his... Uh, yeah, I am not surprised to see Max Quake. It doesn't kill us, but he should outspeed us now because of the sticky webs. So he can just... he can go for the Vine Lash here. Ah, he's gonna go for the Vine Lash and... Mm, I wish he had knocked me out. Why did I have to be so bulky, Galvantula? Prep for sticky webs, people. Actually, he didn't go for the Vine Lash. I think that was a misplay. But, but like I said, he doesn't know that I am... Uh, he doesn't know that I am Boots on the Cinderace. I missed the first Pyro Ball of the season. Hopefully all of my bad luck is gone now. <laughs> hopefully hopefully I can hit the rest of them from here on out. This is Blaze boosted, it's adamant max attack, it should kill. Good. G Max is down. He can now bring in the Zam, for which I can't actually really beat the Zam. Uh, I mean, I still have... Actually, Pincurchin can live... Pincurchin should live whatever he wants to go for with Zam. I... Cinderace is still good here. I should not let Cinderace die. I think he should go into Zam uh, and click an attack. I'm going to have to think about... If what I want to like take damage from Zam, I, it would have been Porygon 2, but I let it die, so can't do that anymore. Why is my audio not recording? Like the capture card audio. That is, oh, that's. Yeah, so this is Zam. We do not let this die. We go into... I 
I think... I think we have to go into Pinkurchin and then click Sucker Punch, then go into our Flapple and try to put in work. So this, sh I would expect this to hit KO. Yeah. Now I click Sucker Punch. Unfortunately, our terrain goes away at the like the worst time possible. He might try to actually switch this out, but I'm hoping that he leaves it in so I can break his sash. All right, that's good with me. So now I go into Flapple, G-Max up, and go for the Airstream boost. And it's possible even, like, I'm going to take a speed drop here. Dracovish should still be able to outspeed me. That is what it is. We still have our Seismitoad to try to take that thing on. We're probably going to have to make a double switch out of Seismitoad into Cinderace. To like try to make that aggressive play to win at this point, like if we even have a chance to win. It certainly helps that he left his Zam in there to have its sash broken. Dazzling Gleam. That does a lot of damage. So maybe I should have risked um Maybe I should have risked the Sucker Punch miss. So I could have not taken all that damage with Flapple. And then maybe it could have survived a hit from his Dracovish. But there's a good chance he has Strong Draw Ice Fang. Would have never lived that. No chance. I am... I'm staying in. Uh, we have to just kind of pray at this point. Yeah, there's Ice Fang. So, like, we he had a chance to miss that. I don't know if he's going to be Scarfed or not. If he's Scarfed, then he outspeeds Cinderace. We have to go into this thing now. So he's down to... I'm going to pull the double... If he switches out and we get this play right, then we might get uh, reduced. We might be able to reduce our differential. It's like I can't beat Vickavolt with this. Yeah, he did switch. Okay, so we got him there. But he actually went out into this thing. Right, because, yeah, that makes sense. This is because he can bring in, he can, like, sack this off, bring Vickable in, and click Energy Ball. He... Son of a bitch. Why did he not click that before? I don't understand why I didn't click that before. Anyways, we definitely lose this 3-0 now, because he preserves he, pre he preserves the uh, he preserves this him on top for differential, goes into Vickable, clicks energy ball. Uh, my play should be to go for a freeze on the Vickable. Switch this out, Pico. That's not a good play. We should be preserving this differential here. Um, but... Because I don't think he's Assault Best Vickable. He 
shouldn't go into it now. If he's clearly he's clearly fine with giving me the extra differential point, which I will take. Um, well, he could. He's, he's probably just going to bring in the Dracovish now to click Outrage, I presume. Nope. Goes into this instead. I could have actually clicked Stealth Rock on his Sucker Punch just to get a little extra damage off against this thing, but I need a freeze regardless. And even then, I don't think... Oh, he's faster under Sticky Web. Yeah, that's definitely GG. As Rindleberry does not help us live. So, I guess you can't fault him for not wanting to... Or for wanting to not risk the freeze. But, I mean, I will... I would have... <laughs> I would have probably risked it, to be honest, but uh, yeah. So that's a 2 all loss. I good game to Eco. He, I think he, the, he prepped pretty well for this game, honestly. Uh, I mean, he's definitely got a hell of a lot. Well, I wouldn't say that he's, I wouldn't say that he's got more time to prep than I do, but like, I don't think I prepped a good team at all. Like, I put the team together in like just over half an hour basically just like pick six mons to bring and then okay this is the set I'm gonna bring like I didn't really put much thought into how the, the team would work uh, sucker punch hit him on top revealing that at the end was you know that kind of caught me off guard because I feel like he should have tried to click it earlier like expecting me to have like u-turn or something Early in the game, like, there's no drawback for me to click U-turn, unless he thought that I- unless he actually thought that I was banded. Early in the game, which is possible. Uh, he should have seen that I was actually, um, boots once I didn't get my speed drop to the sticky web. But, yeah. The other thing that I think I'm- you know what? It didn't matter. I don't think it mattered that- I don't think it mattered that I went for the speed boost with Flapple uh, instead of uh, trying to pick off the Xan with Sucker Punch because um, I can't put my put my thoughts together uh, to right now. But I don't think it mattered because I think Dracovish Strong Jaw boosted Ice Fang would have probably O code. Uh, almost definitely would have o code for sure the the flapple so you know maybe i should have put uh yachi berry on this thing instead of uh kebia berry because we actually managed to uh deal with the venusaur semi well uh, unfortunately galvantula didn't get to put in that much work uh because uh he brought the sticky web on vickavolt so yeah, I just realized I was like, this thing surely can't be a Sulphus Vickable when he already had set up Sticky Web. So that was silly of me, but good game to him. We're going to fall to 0-1. We lose the opening night, the opening week Monday Nighter for the second season in a row. Go figure. Uh, anyways, we will be back next Sunday for week two of the IBL where we go up against another fellow uh, LET uh, acquaintance. Shall I say? Uh, I mean, he's. I shouldn't call him a. I shouldn't really be calling him an acquaintance because, you know, he's a he's a good friend that's in the front office. That would be Sventune and his upsell at um, Umbreon's. We will have that match for you next Sunday. So be looking forward to that. Hopefully, we can bounce back. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel for all of our draft league content, and we will see you next week for some more IBL. Hello everyone, it's Howler here. Uh, I need to talk about something really, really quick uh, at the end of this video. Uh, I'll try to keep it short and not to not to drag it out too much, uh, but 
I had to make the very difficult decision to uh, drop from IBL uh, this season. Um, it's a very difficult decision because IBL has been has honestly it's honestly been it's honestly changed my life like the last uh, two years or so like a year and a half that I've been a part of it um, it's given me uh, a really a real meaningful hobby and something that's um, that uh, that brings me joy because I, I, I like to have videos weekly for you guys um, but that's what it is it's just a hobby and it's over the like the last week and a, and, a, and a bit so I've been feeling like the YouTube hobby has been causing me more stress than it is fun so I felt like I needed to take a step back because you know I don't need my hobbies to be causing me stress right hobbies should be fun they shouldn't be making me feel a certain type of way that I don't want to be feeling so like yeah it's it's really unfortunate it's really unfortunate I wish that like I've never dropped from a league before I, I just wish that I had uh, foreseen that I was not gonna be able to handle doing three leagues at once not gonna be able to put up four videos uh, per week it's just unrealistic for me to handle um, you know I was doing three leagues back in like uh, March early April back when NCL APA Academy and IBL were all, all running at the same time but there was no baseball then because that was the beginning of the uh, clusterfuck is what I like to call it I think everybody knows what I'm talking about um, so I had a hell of a lot more free time and to to do things than I do now. Um, you know, we have we've we started playing baseball games again. We're going to be starting a whole new fall ball season in a couple weeks, and we have over 60 kids signed up for fall ball. So that deserves a lot of attention. Like coaching baseball is my number one passion. Always baseball is always number one over Pokemon as far as hobbies go and baseball is far more of a job than YouTubing is I get paid pretty pretty damn good for coaching kids baseball I would do it for free but I get paid to do it anyway um, so yeah I just I felt too overwhelmed this past week I needed to make a decision uh, I barely able to find time to build my own teams right now and you know if I were to stay around it if I were to stick around it would just be dragging me down and um, I wouldn't be able to give it my 100% which you know I've been playing games recently where I haven't built my own teams and it just makes the games not very fun to play and for the most part translates to content that isn't very fun to watch and that's not the type of content that I want to be putting on my channel um, I you know quant quality over quantity right uh, I want to make sure that I'm putting forward three quality videos a week rather than four bad videos a week because I am you know feeling too stressed and not into it so uh, yeah, I, I don't want to I don't want to make this go on any further uh, I won't be this will be the last IBL upload for season 8. I'm not saying goodbye to IBL forever uh, I would definitely uh, entertain the idea of returning to IBL if uh, the next season is taking place uh, at a time that less is going on in in uh, in my life I would definitely consider making a return um yeah i guess all that needs to be said is go follow quincy adams on youtube and twitter because he is taking over my team i know that he has already made uh eight transactions uh, as his new coach sorry i didn't exactly set you up for success quincy with the uh sort of meme team that i drafted 
Um, but I hope that you can make the most of it, and I will be uh, rooting for you in your uh, in your IBL season. So yeah, uh, sorry to disappoint those who I'm sure that are going to be disappointed, but uh, I hope that um, most of you will still continue to support uh, me on my channel and whatever else I got going on. So yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.